One of the big areas of focus at the World Economic Forum in Davos this year is moving away from traditional fossil fuel fired vehicles to uh, vehicles that use more sustainable fuel sources. And to talk about the role that ethanol can potentially play in the automobile uh, revolution of India, we're joined here at Davos by Vijay Nirani. He's the managing director of True All Bioenergy. Thank you very much, uh, Vijay, for joining us here at the Business Today, uh, India Today coverage of the World Economic Forum. I want to start by asking you about the kind of response that you're getting here at Davos to the idea that the future of automobiles could possibly be powered by ethanol. Thank you so much for having me, Rahul. I think uh, you guys are doing a fantastic job with the live coverage of World Economic Forum and how India is contributing to the world. So coming back to uh, ethanol as a fuel or the biofuels, uh, I think we, we are seeing so much of interest across uh, the forum and majority of the panels or the talk across the city currently is on energy. So the world is moving towards a transition. There is a shift from our regular uh, fossil fuels to cleaner or greener energy, especially in the Europe. Any kind of energy is what they're looking for. They're looking at uh, very horrible temperatures and they don't have ample gas even to uh, uh, you know warm their homes. So in a situation like this, it is extremely important for us to have the transition at the earliest and that is what the world is looking at. So for True Alt, I think we're getting such a very, very warm uh, reception to wherever we are going. Is uh, A lot of these large cap companies, they are taking interest to us. We are having a lot of meetings and they're really looking at India as one of their very big set up. So the uh, China next story to India is, is real and through companies like us, we can see the uh, reception that they're giving to us. So there's been a lot of talk about electric mobility and how electric mobility could be the future. In this conversation about the role that EVs could play, what role do you think ethanol potentially has as a cleaner fuel alternate to fossil fuels? Now, I think uh, EVs are one of the largest uh, solutions to the transition, but EVs are not a standalone option alone. So, of course, we would need a array of a bouquet of uh, different fossil fuel, I mean, uh, different biofuels. Ethanol is one of the biggest source of that. So, when we speak of the cyclability of ethanol, right? So, ethanol comes from a plant-based raw material, that is sugarcane or grains or any of these other products. Or when we speak of 2G ethanol, it comes from absolute waste. So my theory on uh, biofuels is this, especially ethanol or bio CNG as against EVs is this that the carbon emission that we do through ethanol is about two carbon atoms and the carbon that is emitted back into the atmosphere is consumed back by the sugarcane plantation when it is growing because the plants need carbon dioxide. The same carbon emitted out is going back into the sugarcane. The sugarcane comes back, it is grown we convert it into uh, ethanol and then ethanol is used by the farmers and the consumers in the end. So there is a very nice cyclability of this. The idea largely for the world is not to create more carbon. We need to recycle the carbon that is already there in the atmosphere. So whereas in EV, EV is a phenomenal uh, mechanism where uh, we are being powered by solar, wind and uh, hydro. So of course, there is whatever cost that is there in EVs, but uh, that is one of the biggest solutions that we have. I'm not saying EV is the only solution. So here, when we speak of ethanol, the biggest solution that I see in my theory is this, that every penny that is earned through ethanol uh, by the consumers, when we sell it to the consumers, companies like us get the revenue, we pass on the benefit to the bottom person in the, the food chain, that is the farmers. When the farmers get the money, it is employed back in the local economy. So there is a saying that goes, 1% increase in the farmer's revenue is a 4% increase in the uh, product mix. 4% mix in the uh, product mix, that is in the FMCG uh, uh, product, is about 10% growth in the total economy. So Transport Minister Nitin Gadkari has been pushing the idea of ethanol as a cleaner fuel for a long time now. What's the response that you're getting from farmers in terms of their awareness, in terms of how they potentially benefit and their desire to uh, help build this ethanol? Uh, 
So largely, I think the government has done a phenomenal job supporting the agri sector, right? The national biofuel policy was a game changer. Uh, Minister Gadkari sir has been the biggest uh, voice for uh, the sector in large. So uh, the farmers have actually gained alertness on this. So if I speak of my area in, La- in the north of Karnataka and parts of Maharashtra especially, is this that the farmers earlier used to have a very, uh, uh, they did not know it was just simply sell the sugar cane and then uh, it is end of story there. Now we are collecting the harvested trash. You know, when the sugar cane is harvested, there is trash on top. So we get that, we put it in our biodigesters and generate biogas out of it and convert it into uh, methane. And the methane is compressed and sold back again to the farmer so that he can run his tractors on methane. So when his tractors run on methane, he's going to, his cost per uh, kg of methane is only 54 rupees under the Satat scheme. As against, if he's consuming diesel for his tractor, the real cost of diesel is above 100 rupees. So he's near close, he's saving close to about uh, 46 to 50 percent uh, of his uh, expenditure on his automation. When you speak of automation for farmers, the major and the only automation that a farmer in India today, they have is a tractor. And if we are subsidizing that cost through uh, a product that he's building, so I think that is a game changer. Do you see ethanol as being a standalone source of uh, energy? Or do you see even in the future, ethanol being used largely as a blend? Oh, absolutely. So in fact, we are much, much later, late in, in the ethanol story as compared to Brazil or Sweden or many of these uh, con- the advanced developed countries. Uh, ethanol as a standalone fuel is a reality across many countries already. So if you speak of the Formula One cars, ethanol is a standalone uh, fuel. So if you speak of efficiency of the fuel uh, of ethanol, it is used in the fastest of the cars on the planet. So Koenigsegg or, or the supercars that are there, the hypercars that are there, they run on ethanol. So when I speak of ethanol as a standalone fuel, it is going to be a reality. The challenge we are facing is the availability of ethanol. So we don't even have ample ethanol to even blend 20% of the vehicles uh, uh, that are currently there. So we consume about uh, a thousand uh, liters of petrol uh, in India and to consume, uh, uh, sorry, about 4,000 liters of petrol in India. And uh, to blend that with 20% of uh, ethanol, we require about eight, uh, uh, close to 800 to 900 kiloliters of ethanol. We don't have enough capacity to even blend 20%. So the idea is we need a larger uh, push for ethanol so that this becomes a reality for our local economy to grow by large. What are the lessons from Brazil that you think India could learn when it comes to trying to expedite the adoption of ethanol? So I think uh, the first step would be to uh, promote the CM, that Society of Indian Automobile Manufacturers, to start launching the vehicles and I think they are well on their tracks. So Toyota and Maruti, we have been working closely with them. So Toyota has had uh, come to our uh, establishments multiple of times to proof check the availability of ethanol, whether it's going to be there to stay. So it is a story of uh, the chicken and eggs in this scenario. So uh, the CM wants uh, the ethanol infrastructure to grow tremendously and then they want to launch it. Whereas the industry ethanol sector wants these guys to at least launch a few vehicles so that we scale up. So uh, as to all bioenergy under the MRN group, we have taken a uh, a very, very uh, risk free bet, I would say, because we know that this is a fuel of the future. Uh, When I say of the future, we are 20 years behind, but yet this is of the future for where we are currently. Is there a risk that EVs could leave ethanol in the past? Uh, not really, absolutely. I'm, I'm absolutely uh, certain about that because, it, like I said, EV is an option in the bouquet of uh, 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 the, 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 the fuels available, right? So to have the EVs, it has got its own infrastructural problems. So uh, if the multiple of vehicles convert into EV or if the new vehicles, assuming 100% of them become EV, the infrastructure to charge them, we all know what is the time required for them to charge. We all know the hassles that uh, EV has. I'm not saying EV is a bad option. EV is the perfect example, I mean, solution for the problem that we have currently. So like I said, if a consumer wants a hyper solution where he simply goes to a fuel station, gets a, a conscious free uh, fuel for him to consume in his vehicle without wasting ample amount of time, and he is... Uh, conscious that he is consuming sustainable fuel. So that is where ethanol and methane come in force. So how, how, how do you assess consumer awareness at this moment? How important in your sense is it for Indian consumers to 
do the socially conscious and relevant thing and i think uh, currently the indian consumer is price conscious nothing beyond that so and how uh, does the price compare uh, if we sp- ethanol is a uh, price at 65 rupees a liter uh, when uh, extracted from sugar cane juice it's at 50 60 rupees when extracted from bee heavy molasses as compared to petrol which is almost 120 130 rupees in many of the indian cities so my point is the cost of ethanol is half of your fuel and the cost of per kilometer running cost of uh, ethanol is almost about uh, 20 to 25% lesser than your uh, petrol because of the efficiency uh, mileage the the so ethanol has more mileage ethanol has lesser mileage lesser but mileage. fuel economy is almost 20 because to 25% it's cheaper yeah it's cheaper so uh, the uh, fuel output or the mileage output is uh, 70% as compared to uh, petrol but the cost of ethanol is almost 50% as compared to and what to about ethanol. the impact on the engine for example uh, so the, when we get uh, e100 engines so e100 engines are capable to run purely on ethanol and it it's it's one of the purest form of uh, energy so there's no sulfur content there's no any other uh, content in that as compared to uh, the petrol so in this scenario we are going to have a very larger uh, health of the engine because the pollutants are lesser as compared so uh, in 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 my opinion i think uh, ethanol is going to be a game changer for a consumer who wants options uh, for him to uh, run the fuel the union budget comes up in a few days from now um what could potentially be done by the central government to speed up the adoption uh, of ethanol no i think uh, uh, currently we've got a very beautiful policy and scheme in place i think the right uh, push towards the automotive sector is what is required so by that i mean uh, set establishment of uh, the infrastructure the dispensing stations uh, so because we, uh, the uh, india has uh, indian oil bpcl all these psus are there in the remotest of villages today so if the infrastructure starts coming up that is when uh, the industry players start taking ethanol as a serious of fuel and if ethanol is taken as a serious fuel there will be a lot more of these uh, consu- i mean uh, industry bodies the ethanol sector will enhance and production will improve so my my uh, key point uh, to the ethanol story is that this is not only a sustainable product of course it is uh, one of the most sustainable fuel that is available this is not only saving the forex uh, revenues of our country it is strengthening the forex it is largely benefiting the local economy to an unimaginable level so i will tell you i must visit you i must invite you uh, sometime to our facilities a, a remote village called mudhol uh, where 20 years ago there were hardly about uh, 8 to 10 uh, cars in the entire town now there are mercedes benzes there are bmws there are uh, every household has at least a toyota innova so that is the kind of growth that they have seen because of the sector that is growing that is agriculture and no they don't have any other industry it's only the agro based industry the uh, that is happening through groups like ours so if the last person in the economy is benefited so it is i mean uh, there is no uh, mat to it the, the country grows at large well this has been an interesting conversation ethanol is at an important juncture in its uh, adoption in india Let's see how it takes off from here. We wish you all the best. Thank you Thank very you much. So much sir. Thank you so much sir. Join us. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you.